Welcome to this weekly COVID-19 update. My name is Dr. Agnes Mahomva, the Chief Coordinator for the National Response to COVID-19 Pandemic here in Zimbabwe. Mr. Nobo Mawungwa is with me on the Sign Language Desk. In today's update, I am going to focus on some lessons learned that we are using to strengthen the national response. I will also focus on some key vaccine development or rather deployment strategies that the nation has adopted. But first, our most recent COVID-19 statistics as usual. As of Thursday, the 4th of January 2021, Zimbabwe's cumulative number of COVID-19 cases was over 33,964, with over 27,391 recoveries, 1,269 deaths, and a recovery rate of about 81%. Blawayo and the Harare metropolitan provinces continue to be the nation's main hotspots, followed by Manikaland and Mashonaland East provinces. The good news is that the country's epidemic curve is on a downward trend, an indication that the country's response is on the right path. As we work to continue strengthening our national response with the aim of getting the pandemic completely under control very soon, the question that comes to mind is what exactly are some of the key lessons learned from both the first and the second wave that we need to pay attention to in order to not only control the pandemic uh, in a timely fashion, but to prevent and prepare for a potential third wave. Let me repeat, prepare for a potential third wave. First, we have to learn uh, that strong community ownership of uh, the response is very critical. Whilst government uh, plays an essential role in leading and coordinating the national response by ensuring that uh, comprehensive national guidelines and protocols are in place for all sectors, uh, uh, for example, um, it is important that the involvement of individuals and communities like you and I uh, is really uh, taken on board. It has significantly, these actually can significantly contribute to our achievements or lack of. Meaningful community involvement means taking action without waiting to be forced by government, for example, the police. Communities, once again, you and I, need to first realize and appreciate that the recommended preventative measures are for our good and not for someone else. We have learned that a high adherence to proper wearing of face masks, washing our hands with soap and running water, or sanitizing with alcohol-based sanitizers, and of course social distancing, avoiding those crowds, and again without waiting for the police to chase us up, is a good indication that individuals and communities are taking ownership. Sadly, this is not always the case. We therefore have lots of work to do in this particular area as individuals and as communities. Community ownership of the response is also demonstrated by us individuals in our communities refraining from sharing fake and misleading COVID-19 information that uh, cause panic and hence jeopardize our response. Community ownership of the response is also, once again, demonstrated by us as individuals holding each other accountable in our own households and, of course, in the communities where we're coming from, once again, without waiting for someone else to do it for us. In addition to issues of community ownership, we have learned that surveillance and testing are key elements to our response. Surveillance enables us to detect cases early, contact trace, and provide appropriate management for identified cases in a timely way. 
Based on this, more testing consumables have now been procured and more testing has been conducted in recent weeks, as you have seen in the numbers that we issue every day. Additional healthcare workers have been availed to strengthen the surveillance work of our rapid response teams. More, of course, still needs to be done to continue strengthening our surveillance pillar. We are very aware of that. Of that. Third, we have learned the importance of being guided by science in everything that we do, in all our work, especially on treatment guidelines and protocols. This is an area I covered in detail last week. The need to follow science-based processes of introducing new medicines is a lesson we cannot, we cannot afford to ignore. All patients must be protected from unsafe practices. Work to strengthen this area is, of course, continuing. Fourth, we have learned that infection prevention and control, IPC, is the cornerstone of our response. The best medicine for this pandemic is preventing the spread of the virus. Prevention, prevention, prevention. It is not only cheaper than all the other measures, but science has demonstrated that it is also very effective. Paying attention to these key lessons that we have learned is one of the best ways of not only taking um, our response to a higher level uh, and hence controlling the pandemic, but of also uh, preventing and preparing for a potential third wave. We can't rule that out. In addition to uh, paying attention to lessons learned, part of strengthening our response and indeed preventing a third wave include deployment of vaccines. Note, however, that vaccines are simply uh, an additional prevention measure that is meant to complement uh, what we are already doing. In other words, existing preventative measures that we kept, we have talked about here over and over again. Work in this area is at an advanced stage with a detailed vaccine strategic framework now in place. The framework covers 12 key strategic areas in line with the WHO and the AU or Africa CDC guidelines. Some of the key strategies include first careful review of the country context in which the vaccines are to be introduced. Clarity on this is very important as this has big implications on how we manage all the vaccine deployment processes, how well we can do that. This strategic area has already been addressed. Second, are the regulatory issues. Very important strategic area. Vaccines are new drugs and hence must, and I want to repeat, must, like all other drugs, go through the Medicines Control Authority of Zimbabwe regulatory processes before they can be used in Zimbabwe. This is a normal process designed to protect the population from fake or substandard medicines, including vaccines in this case. It is once again an important way of protecting every Zimbabwean from unsafe vaccines. Safety, monitoring, and management of any vaccine adverse side effects is a critical strategic area that the National Vaccine Framework also covers and covers in great detail. The healthcare workers administering the vaccines together with the Medicines Control Authority of Zimbabwe and of course other local scientists will work on this area throughout the deployment period and of course beyond the deployment period. Monitoring and evaluation of the whole vaccine process as well as uh, implementation of robust surveillance systems is another strategic area included in our national vaccine framework. Zimbabwe is well known by renowned global public health bodies such as WHO for a very strong expanded program on immunization, EPI, uh, program that dates back to the 80s. Lessons learned from the EPI program um, and existing EPI systems are being used and strengthened to support the deployment of COVID-19 vaccines. There's no need to reinvent the wheel.
The fifth key strategic area looks at target populations for vaccines and how groups will be a prioritized. Please note that it is government's intention that every Zimbabwean will have access to a vaccine. No one will, however, be forced to take a vaccine. Introduction of vaccines will be done in a phased approach, uh, with the first phase targeting the frontline workers, such as the healthcare workers, as well as those with underlying medical conditions. Work to get the exact numbers, the details for each of these categories or phases is being uh, worked on and finalized. The sixth key vaccine strategy is the frame in the in our framing uh, uh, is really the communication and advocacy. This is a very critical strategy. It is designed to ensure that the population has accurate vaccine information and is not misled or, or scared away by misinformation coming from social media or other unreliable sources. Work on this area is also in progress. Resource mobilization for procurement, deployment of vaccine is another very important strategy included in our framework. A lot has already gone into this with the Treasury setting aside funds to procure vaccines, work with the private sector and the other key stakeholders on mobilizing additional uh, vaccine resources um, uh, and to make sure that uh, we are able to manage our processes. And all those processes are at an advanced stage. Good progress has indeed been made with some pledges and uh, donations having already been made and received. So as we work towards strengthening our COVID-19 response using existing strategies, lessons learned, or using new strategies such as the introduction of vaccines, let us always remember that prevention is the best medicine. There is no substitute for it. Whether you receive a vaccine or not, uh, it is important that you social distance still, wash your hands with soap and running water, sanitize your hands, and always, always wear a face mask properly. Thank you.